Chickens need water. <laughs> that little five gallon bucket just isn't cutting it for the 12 chickens we have any longer. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to create a larger chicken waterer. Thanks for tuning in to The Unhurried Farm. So these girls over here have been so wonderful about nine years ago, just before our son was born. But some of the things we've learned along the way and that have been really rewarding for us and our family is to raise these little chicks, to see them grow up in the hens, and then see that kind of cycle go on with them where we're able to give them food and have them give us eggs that we're able to use. And in addition to the regular chicken feed that we give them, we also have really enjoyed being able to give them some chicken scraps. Uh, chicken scraps. We don't let them eat chicken. Kitchen scraps. We give them kitchen scraps as well as some of the things that we don't want to eat from the, the garden. Let's say there's something failed or eaten by a bunch of bugs or even better loaded with bugs. We like to feed those to the chickens. Our kids really enjoy doing that. What we're finding though is we went this season from five or six chickens to 12 chickens and that has put a little bit more strain on the amount of water that they're utilizing and so I've used that, that bucket over there, that five gallon bucket, used to be inside their chicken coop, but now we're realizing that they just need water. We're finding ourselves filling that too often. And that bucket isn't made to be outdoors. It's not UV stabilized. And so we're gonna be upgrading to a bucket that holds more water and can hang out in this kind of uh, sun rays beating down on it without getting brittle and breaking. So I'm gonna show you how to make that using one of these food grade barrels. So this bucket uses a nipple that's just on the bottom of it, which is also not sufficient. You see that gal drinking a little bit from the bottom there? And they hit a nipple and it actu actuates this little water and it drips out a few drops. But for 12 chickens, this kind of container with just one single feeding source or drinking source is just not enough. And so we're gonna be upgrading from that bucket to that barrel over there. Well, making a chicken water is easier than you would think. First of all, you want to start with some sort of container that is food grade. Now, I got this barrel. This is just left over. I think I paid like 10 bucks for it from a supplier that has this sort of thing. Um, what you want to primarily avoid is using something that has had some sort of caustic chemical in it or something like that. So food grade barrel like this, sometimes they hold things like Gatorade or Coca-Cola or something like that is a great option. Um, this one I wanted to do something that had a large removable top. So this, in this case, this ring uh, comes off of here and lets you take off the entire lid. And then the inside of it, it's always a good idea to give one of these a big rinse to make sure that any of the remaining stuff that was in here is definitely washed out. Outside of this, you only need two other things. You need a drill bit and you need some sort of watering device. In this case, I use these Rent-A-Coupe water, uh, watering nipples. And so let me just show you what this looks like here. You screw this onto the container and then what happens is the chickens come and when they hit this little metal thing with their beak, some water spills out here and they're able to then drink it. Now, one reason why I decided to use these rent a coop ones instead of previous ones is that this one came with a little tool that's gonna be helpful. This tool is gonna attach to the end of my drill bit, is gonna go right on the end of this and allow me to use my drill to spin this into the barrel. That's gonna make the job a little bit easier than having to try this by hand. What do we need to do now? We need to take and figure out where we're going to drill these holes and then we need to install those nipples. Now, the chickens, they're, those hens, you know, they're wanting a drink at about eight or 10 inches up, but we don't want to do eight or 10 inches up on the barrel because now all of this water down here can become stagnant. We want it to be down here like an inch or two. Really, I'm just going to be looking to where this ends up being flat. Um, and so how are we going to do that? What, what we're going to want to do is to just raise it up using some sort of, you know, cinder blocks or something like that to get that, get that desired height. So we're going to do this first and then raise it to the desired height using cement blocks or cinder blocks. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to measure out where those are. I'm going to mark them and I'm going to drill those holes. Okay, so I'm noticing that really there's almost, I almost don't even need in this case to measure because I can see with my eyeballs where this starts getting flat. There's also a seam that I'm following along. So I'm gonna have all four of the, uh, the nipples on 
really one hemisphere because I'm gonna have it up against the fence and I want the chickens to be able to get to it. Maybe a span, finger span, that's what we'll do. So that's gonna give some few positions that they're able to get their water from. All right, so the first thing is take and drill the first bit. Okay, so now I've swapped out my drill bit for my um, little turning tool. And usually when you are gonna start something, you just st can start it by hand, but this is a really hard plastic. So I'm gonna use this to, to do that. Man, I couldn't, I couldn't imagine doing this by hand. Let's see, one more turn, because I want the bottom of this, the little lip of it, the little cup facing the bottom, so probably one more turn. And that way that washer that's behind it is engaged. I'm gonna show you once again the anatomy of this thing. So this has a washer in the back, and it also comes pre-threaded, so that way it's going to go through and make a beautifully tight seal on this, uh, on this barrel. Okay, so now what we're gonna do, the step that we wanna take is to test these out and see if these have properly sealed. Because if we have some, something that's got a leak, that's gonna be real bad. So I'm gonna take it, I'm gonna fill the first, uh, you know, first maybe six inches of this up with some water just to see what happens here. Okay, so I'm about an inch over the top of these things. One nice thing about these red ones is that the chickens are drawn to the color red and so they're gonna automatically come and be interested in what's going on here. And yeah, I don't see any leaks at all. Everything looks like those washers are doing their job. I'm gonna show you what it looks like on the inside of this. You see down there below the water line are those little ends that are coming in. And then here, you notice how this works. So I've never actually used one of these sideways ones. You see how depressing that little metal part causes water to come out. So this is dispensing water every time on demand. And imagine that, this thing here is, I think 30 gallons or so. So we've got a little five gallon being upgraded to now a 30 gallon USD. Because we're gonna be utilizing this thing right away, I'm gonna take out the other one and show you the difference between these two waterers. So now I actually suspect that this was leaking because either they're drinking the water really, really quickly and on these hot days, do you see how that has that nipple right there? Yeah, this thing was almost out of water. These girls are just thirsty. Like, it seems like almost every day I'm just refilling this thing. So now we're gonna be going from this, having to water them every couple of days to this, where we're gonna be able to water them maybe once a week, once every week and a half or so, until they work their way down to that. So I feel like this is a really great upgrade. Okay, now that's all that's left is to take this and put this inside the coop. Hopefully this door is big enough, I didn't even measure it. May have to cut my way in there, let's see. It's actually a little heavy for me to maneuver. Hey, hey, come back here, Chicky. No, 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 you guys get in there. Come on, Chick. All right, look out, girls. So I, I only have this on this wood platform right now and I need to put some blocks so there's a little bit wider base for this big thing because this is too small but for just a couple of gallons in here to get them started that should work just fine. Okay so we're filling this with some water. The issue is that you also have to go and train your chickens so that way they can tell that by hitting this there's some water and so sometimes taking their faces and just there you go see they will learn from each other too. They're learning it. They're used to there only being one one thing so I'm gonna take here. When to turn it off? When to turn it off? When to turn it off? Yeah. Let's see. Okay, now's probably a good time to turn it off. See, now these chickies are going after. You notice with those four waterers that we've got, we now have plenty of room for all 12 of the chickens to be able to get as much water as they want. They're going to be able to drink up and not have to fight each other as much in order to do it. Okay, so there are two more pieces. There's this lid, and then there's this lid 
uh, ring that goes on here that really cinches it, keeps it watertight. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm probably just gonna put this lid on here in the meantime. It's easy to remove, it holds itself in place uh, without having to put this, this thing on here and that'll make it easier to water. Eventually I'm gonna take and probably either remove this, um, what they call like a bung cap and plumb some sort of you know PVC piping in here so that way I could just attach it to a hose on the outside without having to come here at all. But in the meantime, you know, even if I get the hose underneath there like that, it's going to be still really easy to water. And I'm watering infrequently, so this will work out pretty well. We've got a couple of chickens yet to get who haven't gotten the memo that we're watering them inside there. And uh, so anyway, this is how you do a watering thing. Curious to hear, how have you done your watering? Do you use a bin like this to do it? Or do you have sometimes you can attach it to PVC pipe? Be curious to see that. Anyway, thanks for tuning into this episode of the Unheard Farm. Take a deep breath, live intentionally, and we'll see you next time. All right, let's get those girls. <laughs> she got it, she got it. Here, open the door for your sister. Open your door, open the door. <laughs> she did it.